I think it's gonna work. God, I shouldn't have said that. It's looking like a hell of a thing. Would you even? You guys gotta come see this. Holy smokes. Gang, this is a really big deal. Gang, I just had to quit yesterday. I came down with full-blown reverse Midas syndrome. Everything I touched turned to <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Between the Sharks on this rainy afternoon. Uh, we mocked up a ton of stuff in the last episode, and now it's time to start doing something with more something. I have a particularly vested interest in being able to steer this scrap heap. All right, the way I break this down, a steering in a hot rod like this has three basic components. Hmm. In a hot rod like this, steering has three components or sections that all must work together. Simply put, from the steering box forward, your drag link, your pitman arm, your tie rod, all that stuff, everything that connects the wheels to each other and then back to the steering box. And then you have the steering column, which needs to connect to the body with enough lever so you can you know, do the turn thing. And then you have the magical space in between, which in our case is gonna be more of a street rod style. We're gonna have a couple of joints to help snake our steering column rod situation through. So we are running a Vega style steering box, which is a cross steer setup. Basically, it steers from under the car across to the passenger side, which ties to the driver's side. If you're running like an F1 box or something like that, and you're gonna go with a steering box on the frame rail, and then you run a tie rod straight to a steering arm on the driver's side and connect with one tie rod, that's an entirely different situation. The cross steer is a, for lack of a better word, better, uh, set up geometrically speaking and for our sake I wanted to run something under the car because I've got fenders so running From the frame rail to the outside of the wheel was there's just there's a lot going on between those two On a fully fendered car. So we mocked up our steering box and have that general geometry, right? We'll get in depth on that once our parts are tie rods and our tie rod ends arrive so now it's time to kind of fine tune where this steering column goes, then figure out how long we want it, and then do karate chop and make it shorter so that it clears everything we want it to the way that we need it to in order to make everything work and play nice together. Currently, it's not terrible, but we're down into the exhaust a little bit. The whole thing does need to come back with these shifter levers and stuff. They can be 86. So we gotta dive in. We need to figure out where the steering wheel and everything should sit first, and then figure out what we need to modify to make it work, and then think about those modifications and how we would like it to play with all of these other parts and pieces so that everybody gets along. Cause that's, you know, it's all gotta happen. We need exhaust, we need steering, we need a clutch, we need it all. That's clobbered. I guess I, I monkeyed that up maybe probably. That's the one that came with the car. So they're both trash is what I'm saying. I'm grab them both. 30 seconds later, I'm already bleeding, but you know, that's back in there. It's not really attached to anything, but, and I don't even, I mean, yeah, I'm gonna run it. I was gonna say, I don't know if I'm gonna run it. What else am I gonna run? That steering wheel does look sharp though, right? I decided to throw this back in because it at least gives me some kind of a reference as to where the steering column used to go on a Model T. And this thing is just hanging by this strap and one zip tie, so it's not anywhere near, you know, attached. Well, that guy's not doing his thing anymore. Easy come, easy go, buddy. All right, now we gotta wrestle this thing closer to where we kinda want it to go. This, I gotta, Oh dear, oh dear. That's kind of some Norm Grabowski action going on right there. Well, so it's kind of jammed in there precariously. Like this is, it's, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I got at least two bolts in here with nuts 
So the dashboard is somewhat in place. Steering column's kind of jammed in between the exhaust and the shift levers are on the bell housing. And it's kind of in the way of where our clutch medoodle needs to go, but that's all fine. That's all fine because right now it's just jammed in there. So I'm gonna climb in and just see how that fits. And then I feel like it's gonna wanna come down like a so, but let's. All right, so I made a quick mark about where it breaks the plane of the firewall. It's very inaccurate, it's an ish. Um, but at this point, in lieu of actually knowing what I'm doing, I'm just gonna go ahead and start pulling bolts out. The goal of the project is relatively simple. I just don't know how we're gonna get there. The short version is we need to shorten it so it fits, that it goes in at an angle that's comfortable for driving. We wanna preserve the turn signals and we need to lose the shifter mechanism. Oh, and we need to figure out exactly what the spline on the actual shaft is because somehow if we cut it or do whatever, we're gonna to need to be able to put a universal joint on whatever nub we leave, which is not that big a deal. We just, it's some figuring and we need to make sure, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'd gone ahead and shut you guys down into overdrive fast forward mode because I thought, well, any idiot can take one of these apart, right? No, apparently not. I can't even get the dang steering coupler thing off. I found the retaining clip, so I gave up. Did the right thing, went and made a cup of coffee. Even looked on the internet. And apparently, if a guy finds that thing, the little poodle snapper is supposed to slide right off. But it's not. But I got it off. Apparently, in my defense, I just didn't pull hard enough. So I got it blown apart, um, you know, somewhat organized, a little bit not. Uh, <laughs> there was, you know, there were some surprises, some things I didn't expect. This is the main mass, right? So it still has the shifty Magoo in here. I'm not exactly sure where or how this whole thing comes apart, but I don't know that I completely want to take it apart. And the reason I say that is this is the upper bearing right here and it fits inside the inner shaft right here. So if I remove the inner shaft, I'm not gonna have a good spot for the upper bearing, which is not something I wanna do. And what I'm gonna have to do is cut this anyway. The reason I was thinking about removing the inner shaft was this mechanism here is what controls the column shift. Um, and I really can't tell if it's pressed on or if it's tack welded or if there's something that I'm missing. I think this is an overly done explanation. I was taking it apart piece by piece and then pieces fell out, so whatever. Even if we cut it down, like this is the lower bearing, it'll still slide in. And the upper bearing is part of this like horn isolator guy and they fit inside the inner shaft. So either way, we'd have to get it back together. And then over on the actual steering column side, this is a standard three quarter inch steering shaft. So with the right mixture of universal joints, because we're gonna need multiple to make all of our turns, if we go from three quarter smooth to a double D shaft or something like that, we'll be able to just go ahead and put the U-joints on there. Steering U-joints are outrageously expensive, but that's life, kids. I mean, steering is important, so whatever. Because the options, if you have a round steering shaft, there's a couple things. You can drill a hole and bolt through. You can weld it on, which I think is a mistake because then it can never come apart again. And you can file these down into a double D shape, which maybe that's what we'll do. We'll see what's available. If there's a smooth three quarter U joint to a double D or some other th shaft that'll kind of be the intermediate shafts to the steering box, we may just use one of those. Unfortunately, the original turn signal was pre kablooied I didn't do that. I'll own my mistakes. I don't know where this came from. Came from inside there somewhere, but we'll have to just work it all out, get it all back together and see what happens. We gotta start thinking about cutting stuff and that gives me the heebie-jeebies. All right, so we used to have like one piece, now we got like a mountain of pieces. Inner tube, outer mask thing. There is, did I lose it? There's a fuzzy little kind of like bushing in there. Now these are the same length. In theory, we should be able to 
take the lower bearing stock and it should still fit in the shaft. Now, I'm not gonna really jam it in there because I don't wanna have to get it back out. Oh, but maybe I do wanna do that. Yeah, maybe I do. All right, so that should kind of retain the end of it for now. This protruding is something we'll cut down when the time comes, but for now we can go back to test fitting and sort of see if we can figure out where it's gonna go and a column drop, and then we'll cut this when we know that, and then we'll buy the joints to, to you know, continue. Gang, I just had to quit yesterday. I came down with full-blown reverse Midas syndrome. Everything I touched turned to sh So when I pulled things apart, uh, I did screw up a little bit. And this came out of somewhere that I don't know, and this came out of somewhere that I don't know, somewhere between the little shifter housing and the turn signal area, right? The turn signal was broken, so I went ahead and pulled that out, which was probably also kind of a mistake because it functioned a little bit as sort of like a mass bearing locator. Put everything back together, that was fine. I realized I had this other turn signal switch in my box of stuff that I got with the C10 that I've had for years. Thought maybe that would work because it's an early one, GM still, 60s, like 64 something. But as I went to go look to confirm the turn signal last night, I was having to pull this back over the shaft and this piece, you know, it's just a little bit deformed, tiniest bit, tiniest bit, but the mast bearing got stuck on it and then I exploded it. And after losing my mind briefly, I spent many hours on the internet trying to find out if I could find another mast bearing I think I may have found one, so I ordered it. We'll see when it gets here. And of course I couldn't leave well enough alone, so I took this brand new 60s, 64, five, six turn signals switch and broke it. Try and get this mass bearing out to see if it would <laughs> work, you know? And um, yeah, that's what I did. That's what I did, gang. None of those were good choices. But considering I've gone this far being stupid, um, I thought maybe I could take this inner bearing race that's right in this plastic housing and jam in this slightly more different but very similar upper mass bearing that I took out of this one that I all jacked up. I should probably just wait for the new parts because ultimately the job of this effort and task has nothing to do with mass bearings or turn signals or anything like that. It has everything to do with getting the steering column the right length, the right angle, so that we can get it mounted and start to figure out all the parts and pieces we need to connect it to the steering box. Because, you know, everything from here forward is going to be several phases, like a detailed mock-up, getting it close, and then finding out what parts we need to make that mock-up work. Frustration has got me a little bit like no longer eyes on the prize, you know what I'm saying? But we're gonna power forward. I was gonna make a sports joke, but I don't know which sports have power forwards. Hockey, soccer, basketball, baseball, who knows? I've also confused myself about these spacers. I don't know where they came from. Anyway, if you have a 63 Impala steering column schematic or diagram, that would be swell. A shop manual, a photograph, just uh, shoot it to me. It, uh, between the sharks at gmail.com. That'd be great. Thanks. So I jammed this thing back together. I literally took the bearing apart and put every little ball from the ball bearings that I could find back in and jammed it back together. It's not even worth showing because uh, it's wrong, but that's what I did. So now we're somewhat back on track and I'm not nearly freaking out as bad as I was last night. I'm laughing at it, which is the way to go. With this bearing back in place, I can put the steering shaft back through here. We can put it back in the car and see what we got. Let's see how we do here. Down. 
All right, gang, we're back on to something. So you can see it's just held up by a bungee cord right now, but it's kind of looking all right. I climbed in there, it was kind of all right. It is uh, tilted. It's not, well, let's go to the front of the car. Let's go see where you can see it. So right now, we're clearly crooked this way, but that's because our steering shaft is running right into our exhaust. But the eyeball, the steering box is here. And where it exits the firewall is about right. We just need to be able to swing it this way a little bit, which we can do if we shorten it. So what I'm saying is, I think we've learned what we need to learn. And if I trim the steering column mast here, we'll be able to attach it to the firewall with some kind of bracketries that we weld on, so that stays stable. And then we can put a U-joint in here, something like this, so that we can drop the steering shaft down under the exhaust and then just barely by the inside of the exhaust to right here. Probably three joints, which is not really what I want, so I'll require a support uh, bearing thing, but we can make it work, I think, which is kind of, not kind of, it's very important. But I think we're committing time. I think it's time in order to get there. I've gotta go ahead and cut this back. We'll cut the shaft back, leave a little nug hanging out. And I'm pretty sure that the closer we are to the firewall when we start our turn, the better off we're going to be. Because we're going to try to thread the needle between our... Stay. So basically, we're going to come down and try to drop it right in front of this clutch Z-bar. So the further back we start our angle, the better off I think that's going to be. So that we can come in like right through there and then turn... I think it's gonna work. God, I shouldn't have said that. So I'm gonna kind of do a mark around the thing. I wanna, I'm not gonna cut it at an angle, but I think I wanna cut essentially what's gonna be the long side, which is actually down here. And I may leave it an extra inch. It's a lot easier to trim this stuff back than it is to thing longer it. All right, everything's a mess. Nobody should be surprised at that at all. Made a mark, this is this line represents my longer mark of the two at the angle. Just gonna go ahead and cut this here. Uh, tape is a really good way to mark tube things that you need to cut, because you can wrap the tape, and if you can get the ends to line up pretty well, you're gonna be somewhat straight. The bandsaw did not like doing this, because basically the inner tube would move around and it would bind up and pop the blade off. So I learned that lesson by trying three times and having the same result. So I'm gonna cut this with a grinder. covered myself and stuff like I couldn't do anything but spray the sparks right at me and I wasn't like trying to look tough I just just couldn't avoid them you know all right lower bearing stock well we'll get a file it'll work no seriously don't worry it'll be fine see what were you so worried about it's already kind of going in there um the Stock bearings do have two spots for retainer screws, so eventually we'll register those and mark them and put, put the screws in there. All right, now for like the serious business. Let's cut down the other part. All right, we're very loosely reassembled here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, leaving two inches. I need enough for my U-joint to grab and I want a little bit extra. There still is, I think, a pretty significant chance that we're gonna cut this a little further down but this should be enough of a cut that we can put it back in, line it up sort of in the trajectory we really, really want, and then take some no joke final measurements. Because right now, everything was askew because it didn't fit around the exhaust and all that jazz. These two cuts should solve that and it can go back in for like, mo better mock up. Hope we didn't screw that up. You guys gotta come see this. Holy smokes. I mean, we still got a challenge ahead of us, but we're on the right track. The steering wheel is sitting pretty straight, you know? I guess like worst case scenario, I tried to come out of the firewall. I should show you instead of pointing at my face. But I tried to come out of the firewall, but if I really had to, 
depending on how everything else shakes out, we could shorten this enough to basically start the angle way further back. Something like that is still within our realm of possibility. But, 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 I wanna know that's what we wanna do. Might be what we wanna do. I mean, I am, I kinda dig this steering wheel position, but, you know, we can basically go until it decides to hit the windshield, which is about like that. But I'd prefer to keep it this way, but that changes. That's what this angle gets, you know, to be a little tricky, but we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. Let's put some, I have these laying around for some reason. Three quarter inch bore, which is correct, aluminum U-joints. Certainly not something I purchased, but maybe in a move somewhere, somebody just threw them my way. So, don't know if we'll use them, but we can use them for mock-up right now. When you're setting up your steering on a Model T, just be careful that your windshield's right here, so you need enough room for your knuckles. What I'm looking at, I grabbed a, just a piece of rod I have laying around, and I feel like if my joint came from back there, I could start this much more gentle slope to get around this exhaust, which might just be the way to go. But it is a little intimidating, you know what I mean? Y you know, that's cutting it way, way back. I mean, this really does feel pretty good. So, I mean, my arm's on the window, not window, my arm's on the top of the door. You know, about nine o'clock on the steering wheel. Up here, we'll have some upholstery in the back, so I'll be a little bit further forward. I think this is really where I want it. So it's just a matter of figuring out the U-joints, where they go, what kind they are to avoid the exhaust and everything, which it's totally, totally doable. In fact, I'm pretty convinced at this point, if I draw out my little thing that I will be able to prove that it's the same U-joints no matter what. And I can buy some parts and pieces and we can continue the mock-up that way. I need like three hands, but if I came off the steering box with a universal joint that's splined to whatever shaft I use, whether it's three quarter or double D, I'm holding a joint right there. And then if we cruised up and then met the steering column somewhere back there, like five more inches in, our angles all kind of work better. And to stay out of the exhaust, I think if I lose these spacers and pull the steering box in a half an inch, that will make a massive, massive difference. This experiment has proven though, that if we get some U-joints, one that goes from the splined Vega box to whatever style steering shaft we decide to use, three quarter or double D, I'm gonna see if I can get three quarter because I have a couple of joints. Hell, I already have two joints and they're about 80, 60 to 80 bucks a piece. Maybe I only need the one and some steering shaft and we can figure it out. I'll need a center support somewhere, I think, but we just might be able to snake it through with this style of exhaust. All right, so this is a pretty significant step forward. I will order the U-joint that goes onto the steering box and I'll order the steering shaft bit, but I mean, you know, New turn signals already hopefully in the mail. New upper mass bearing, if it fits, is hopefully in the mail. Uh, tie rods are in the mail, so we can connect all of this when it's done. We know now that our best bet is to get this steering box as tight to the frame as possible, so we're ready to do that. We're ready to start modifying this thing now because we kind of know how our steering column is gonna go through, which means we can start thinking about actually working on a pedal assembly because our steering column is actually nice and tight and high out of the way, which is great. Sounds like we're moving forward is what I'm saying, like a lot. These are big steps. Yeah, nothing's finalized. We're not going down the road, but like this level of mock-up is moving at a much faster clip than anything else we've done on the car, despite the fact that I screwed everything up last night. So. Those things happen. Good luck on your projects out there. We will see you next time when we do, there's a lot we can do. So I don't even know what we're gonna do next because we're now marching forward. Well, yeah, so let's continue that march. Later dudes.